Chapter 49. What do you want, Miggery Sal? Again, reader, we must go backward before we can go forward. This book has done that a lot, hasn't it? That's a strategy this author has used. It first introduced you to Despero and then went back in time to introduce you to Roscoe, and then went back in time to introduce you to Miggery Sal. So introduce the characters by going back. And then the author going back is going to do that again. From the, prince, from the princess mom dying. Yes. We must consider for a moment what had occurred with the rat and the servant girl and the princess in the dungeon before Despero made his way to them. See, what happened was this. Roscaro led the pea and Mig deep in the dungeon to a hidden chamber. And there, he directed Mig to put the princess in chains. Gore, said Mig. She's gonna have a tired time learning her lessons if she's all chained up like that. Do as I say, said Roscaro. Maybe, said Mig, before I lock her up, her and me should switch outfits so we could start in already with her being me and me being a princess. Oh, yes, certainly, said Roscaro. A wonderful idea, Miss Miggery. Princess, take off your crown and give it to the servant girl. The pea sighed took off her crown and handed it to Mig. And Mig put it on and immediately it slid right down her small head and came to rest painfully on her poor abused ears. It's a biggish thing, she said, and painful like. Well, well, said Roscaro. How do I look? Mig asked, smiling at him. Ridiculous, he said, laughable. Mig stood blinking back tears. You, you mean I don't look like a princess? She said to the rat. I mean, said Roscoe, you will never look like a princess. No matter how big a head you put on your tiny head, you look like the fool you always were and will be. Now make yourself useful and chain the princess up. Dress time is over. Mig sniffed and wiped her eyes and then bent to look at the pile of chains. And now, princess, he said, I'm afraid the time of your truth has arrived. I will now tell you what your future holds. As you have consigned to darkness, I consign you to a life in this dungeon. Mig looked up. Hey. Isn't she going upstairs to be a serving girl? No, said Roscoe. Ain't I going to be a princess then? No, said Roscoe. But I want to be a princess. No one, said Roscoe, cares what you want. Now, as you know, reader, Miggery Sow had heard this sentiment expressed many times in her short life. Remember, everyone had always told her, no one cares what you want. She wasn't treated very nicely, was she? But now in the dungeon, it hit her. The rat was right. No one cared what she wanted. No one ever cared. And worst of all, no one ever would care. I want, cried Meg. Shh, said the princess. Shut up, said the rat. I want, sobbed Big. I want, I want. What do you want, Miggery Sow? Okay, so there you can see a picture of the princess and Miggery Sow, and you can see Roscoe the rat down in front of him. Can I see? Can I see? I don't see the rat. The rat? Oh, no, I do. Okay. What do you want, Mig? The princess said softly. Eh? shouted Mig. What do you want, Miggery Sal? The princess shouted. Don't ask her, said Roscoe. Shut up, shut up. But it was too late. The words had been said. The question had been asked. The world stopped and creation held its breath 
waiting to hear. What was it that Miggery Sow wanted? I want, said Mig. Yes, shouted the pea. I want my ma, cried Mig in the silent waiting world. I want my ma. Oh, said the princess, and she held out a hand to Mig. Mig took a hold of it. I want my mother too, said the princess softly, and she squeezed Mig's hand. Stop it, shouted Roscaro. Chain her up, chain her up. Gore, said Mig. I ain't gonna do that. You can't make me do it. I got the knife, don't I? Mig took the knife and held it up. If you have any sense at all, said Roscaro, and I doubt you do, you will not use that instrument on me. Without me, you will never find your way out of the dungeon and you will starve to death here or worse. Gore, said Mig. Then lead us out now or I will chuck you into little rat bits. No, said Roscaro. The princess will stay here in the darkness and you, Mig, will stay with her. But I wanna go upstairs, said Mig. I'm afraid we're stuck here, Mig, shouted the princess. Unless the rat has a change of heart and decides to lead us out. There will be no changes of heart, said Roscaro. None. Gore, said Mig, and she lowered the knife. And so the rat, the princess, and the serving girl sat together in the dungeon. Outside the castle, the sun rose and moved through the sky and sank to the earth, and night fell again. They sat together until the candle burned out and another had to be lit. They sat together in the dungeon. They sat and sat. And reader, they might still be sitting there if a mouse had not arrived.